Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside Story. I'm Nelly Skipid. Coming up on our program. Staff at Gecko enjoy a much needed wellness retreat. The cenotaph in Kingstown takes a much needed bath. Students from primary and secondary schools express their feelings on independence. We bring you scenes from the recently held roadshow for the Ministry of Tourism. On Community Beat, Vincentian Canili Brody is living his dream of dancing on some of the world's biggest stages. And on Inside Minute, we look at this country's leaders since independence, from the first Prime Minister, the Honorable Robert Milton Cato, to current Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. Stay with us. We have an interesting package ahead. Diabetes is among the top three leading causes of death. Are you living with diabetes? If so, you may be at risk for developing complications, especially during this COVID pandemic. Let's tackle this problem by complying with taking your medication, increasing your physical activities, increasing eating a balanced and nutritious diet, checking your feet as foot care is important, and contacting your healthcare provider. Remember, diabetes can lead to blindness, amputation, and numerous harmful and life-threatening effects. Protect yourself. Know your numbers. Heart's Movement SVG reminds you to love your body and treat it right. Your health is shared responsibility. Wellness can be described as the act of practicing healthy habits each day so that we may achieve better physical and mental health. With this, the individual will not only survive, but he or she may thrive. Wellness is linked to health. According to the World Health Organization, health is defined as being a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Employee wellness is essential to business and organizational success, and the General Employees Cooperative Credit Union, GECO, recognizes this, and so began the initiative to ensure employee wellness with a staff retreat. Kingston! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> 
I was just thinking, if you came here or you woke up this morning and you want to show what you're going to experience and what it's going to be about, well, from the dancing that started already, the excellent speech by our president, Brother Says, and of course, the involved activities that we just had with Sister Moses, I think you should lay all your face to rest. Today is going to be a great day. We're going to have fun. And we're going to learn some things. We're going to learn some things along the way as the doctor program would definitely highlight. Um, this is a modest yet historic and pioneering event. It's modest in the sense we didn't fly out to Dubai or to some, or to La View or maybe Pink Sand to have this activity. We are here at a facility that was built by Gecko in a very therapeutic and most beautiful picture, uh, picture setting. So that alone tells you that this event is really meant to pack a punch. It's really meant to pack a punch with you, the staff. Why is wellness in the workplace important? Wellness impacts a workplace's culture, its resources and productivity, and ultimately its bottom line. Consequently, how employees are feeling both mentally and physically is more than a human resource issue. It is in fact a fundamental foundation for business growth, stability, strength, and sustainability. Organizations and businesses are made up of people. So it means if wellness is important to indiv individuals, it must be important to the organization and the business. So it means that for an organization to be impactful, efficient, um, for it to be innovative, and for it to even be profitable, it needs to have you know, a workforce that is well. Um, we all know that you know, organizations and businesses are ridden with issues as it relates to turnover, um, as it relates to situations where people feel overworked and tired, and as a result, they can't perform. And so it's always important that organizations and businesses can invest in the wellness of their employees and keep a pulse on their employees' wellness. Um, and not even their employees because there are organizations that even have volunteers. So it, it's something that needs to be applied to you know, the entire human resource. The more well the employees are, it's, the better, it's better for the organization and the business. Wellness, first of all, is holistic. It has to do with your state of well-being, um, whether you feel yourself to be satisfied and content with a variety of areas in your life, and whether you're able to participate in life as fully as you would like to. So that means it captures your physical well-being, um, it captures whether or not you are whether your basic needs are met, are you secure? You know, do you have housing? Do you have employment? Do you have food? Those things fall under wellness. Um, are you in environments that are safe? So if we're in crisis, disaster, conflict, those things de detract from your wellness as well. And it also has to do with your relationships and your connections to other people. So do you have support, whether in your family, with your friends or at work? And then of course, it captures your psychological wellness as well. So emotionally and mentally, whether or not you have a good command of your emotions, whether you can regulate your emotions, whether you can regulate your stress, and, um, and you feel as though you can function in that way as well. So it's, it's, it's multifaceted. It is, the, it is the best asset that we have as people. When we are well, it means that you know, we, can, we can unleash ourselves on the world in all the ways that we imagine, right? You know, do the work that we want to do, um, show up in our relationships the way that we want to, um, parent the way that we want to. But when we're not well, it means that some of our energy and attention is going to be taken up with that or it's going to, we're going to be constrained by the fact that we're not well. So it is, I think that it is the most fundamental asset that we have that allows us to succeed both individually and then of course collectively. The thing that I think of all the time is that when you are well, it allows you to be free. 
So as I was saying before, when you are suffering with respect to any portion of your wellness, it may hold you back, right? Um, and, you know, if you're really embracing your wellness physically, psychologically, spiritually, socially, these are things that let you really live out whatever your dreams and aspirations are for yourself. It lets you participate in society in the way that you want to. And when you don't have that, then, you know, you're, you're caged up. So wellness is freedom. I really love the fact that a business, and especially as large of a business as Geku, is investing in this part of their employees' lives. Um, it's easy to just think of your employees as people who contribute to your bottom line, but really productivity is best influenced by people who are healthy. And you know, it really says something for a business like this to put, to literally put their money where their mouth is, close, close down, give the employees a day to actually focus on this. It's a huge deal. It's, you know, it's quite important that organizations could invest in events just like this, where they actually take time to move away from the traditional workspace and go into an environment that facilitates fun, that facilitates relaxation, that allows persons to, you know, let their hair down and blow off some steam and even band together. Because one of the most critical things to, you know, create an environment of wellness in the workplace is creating that sort of community and camaraderie with each other. Organizations need to really be honest with themselves as to whether or not their culture is one that's toxic or if it's one that actually motivates and encourages their employees to come out to work and they need to be sure that you know even though it's work they still create an environment of fun it's always good when persons can feel motivated to do what they do every day and they can look forward to going to work to actually meet their co-workers and their colleagues because at the end of the day think about it where do we spend most of our time we spend it in the workplace and at the office Welcome back. Just weeks before Remembrance Day, the Cenotaph erected as a symbol of honor for soldiers who died in World Wars I and II is being cleaned by a cleaning specialist from the German company K. Archer, a collaborative effort among the National Trust St. Vincent, One St. Vincent Group, and the German company K. Archer, the team is already making plans to pursue other projects locally. I'm Nick Heiden, I'm a cleaning expert from the company Karcher from Germany and I'm here to do the restorative cleaning of the Cenotaph Monument. Karcher um, is a company which produces and sells cleaning machines. We are no service provider. The Karcher sponsoring is, a, is a pretty exceptional because we do the restorative cleaning for free all around the world. At the beginning of last year, our lo local dealer Scott Ward from the USV Group um, asked us to support him for this pro project. So we get everything together, um, contacted him and um, um, get the transport organized um, to, do this org um, to do this kind of cleaning. So we started on Monday and we'll, we'll be finished next week Tuesday. So actually it has been seven working days to clean this monument to be uh, ready for the 11th of November for the Remembrance Day. 
the preparation for this project was uh, pretty intense to get all the to get in contact with national trust to get the permission and to organize everything the material the transport we uh, get shipped equipment from Germany over here, special equipment like the blasting equipment and microparticle blasting. And um, uh, when everything was installed and put together, I came here, we came to the monument and started the cleaning. OSV is our local dealer, uh, which sells uh, cultural products. And I'm the cleaning expert. I'm doing this for nine years. We have the cultural sponsoring since 1980s, so more than 40 years and um, I came here to execute the restorative cleaning of the monument. Um, it's for culture, it's our first project in the Caribbean that's uh, pretty unique for us. And uh, secondly, we have three different kinds of materials. So we have bronze, the Iron Man, the marble and the granite and for every material we have to adapt our parameters and cleaning methods. So now you can see we can give back the granite is original blue and grey color. So we use uh, the low pressure microparticle blasting with the adjustment of water for the dust mining. And as you can see we can clean it very smoothly, very gently without damaging the original surface which is the first priority. So right here on the granite, we removed the biologic soiling and now we have a yellow uh, stain on the stone which will be removed with a microparticle blasting. Therefore we use a very, very fine powder. It's uh, very fine, it's called aluminium silicate and with that we can remove the yellow stain on the granite very smoothly. We have different kind of soilings here. We have a biological soiling on the marble and on the granite, which is removed by steam cleaning. And we have uh, crusty stains, yellow stains on the marble and the granite, and also calcium um, from the joints and from the, from the stone, which is wa washed out by the rain, uh, which is being removed by low pressure microparticle blasting with addition of water for the dust binding. So everything what we are doing is very sensitive to preserve and do not harm the monument in any way. It's very important to preserve such monuments for further generation and for the future because cleaning is not just something for the eye, it's also a technical cleaning. So um, soiling can also destroy monuments. So we preserve the monument from being destroyed or being attacked by soiling. And for me it's uh, very important to see what kind of cleaning result we achieve on site to preserve it. Getting contacted with National Trust and uh, maybe there are some further projects in the Caribbean. I am Scott Ward. I'm the industrial department team leader at OSV. Um, we'll be our department is responsible for sales of anything equipment-wise, um, so from agriculture equipment to cleaning equipment, um, forestry, landscaping, um, a variety of gasoline and mo uh, electric powered equipment. I became aware of the cultural sponsorship from Karcher um, about four years ago and I reached out to my contact in Dominican Republic where the character head office is for the Caribbean and they uh, came back and said they were very interested in doing a project in St. Vincent and uh, we initially decided to start the project in 2019. Um, uh, we started planning for 2019 and then Covid hit um, shortly after that and uh, we had to call off the project till this year. Um, and. Uh, it's been a um, long ride, <laughs> a lot of um, arranging, organizing, um, shipping in special equipment for the project. Um, but yeah, it was an awareness of the project and I thought that it would be ideal location from a size point of view. It's not a massive monument um, to kick off with for our initial project in the Caribbean. They're looking for more. When, it, when I initially reached out to Karcher for this project, um, they told me um, that it would be the first for the Caribbean. Um, so one of the reasons was just the, the difficulty, the logistical issues that exist, uh, shipping stuff, 
um, lead times. Um, but they said that we should be able to overcome it. Um, and they working with the local um, authorities, so to speak. So we have Tongue Board that we work closely with to initiate the project, as well as National Trust to gain access um, some of the his historic side of it, um, which they were able to provide materials that it was built from. Um, I found the partnership very um, rewarding. Um, we've gained contacts, we've gained um, you know, friends <laughs> um, in, in every area. So we've, ha we've been working with um, Mr. Noel, uh, Mr. Bergen as well, who is the director of Town Board, Kingstown Town Board, um, and Laverne Bentick Phillips, who is the secretary for National Trust. Um, they have been very cooperative um, and extremely delighted to work with us and get the project like this completed. We are making good progress. Uh, we just have till Tuesday to do the major part of the work. Wednesday we'll be more packing up and, um, in the morning and, and going, but we should be on track to finish on Tuesday evening. When we initially planned the project, that was one of the first things. What does the monument stand for? Um, we want to remember the fallen soldiers of the two wars, um, the First World War and the Second World War. Um, and uh, we chose the month before so that we'll be complete in time. If we run into any hiccups, we'll have time to um, get it completed. We are glad to be part of it, um, part of remembering the sacrifice of those who um, fought and died in those two wars. We've been contacted by a couple um, local um, National Trust, of course, they're, they're custodians of a number of historic um, buildings and sites in St. Vincent. Um, so the Carnegie Building, the old public library, is one of the buildings that we're going to take a look at with Nick. And uh, we're also going to just take a look out of interest. Uh, we haven't had anyone reach out um, from the um, Roman Catholic Cathedral. But that's a, uh, one of the um, type of buildings that they're accustomed to working on. And he wants to just take a brief look at it uh, to see what the possibilities are around there. But no plan exactly on that. But we are looking at the Carnegie building for sure in any way that that could be restored. Up next, the API's Inga Jackson chats with students on what independence means to them. As we celebrate this country's national independence, one may ask what does independence mean to you? Today we take to some of the schools here in Kingstown to hear from our future nation builders. Independence means that we have more freedom from slavery and we get to do, we have, get to pick more choices. We are free from British countries and we don't, and no one rules us and we could do whatever we want. We could have fun, we could create our own activities and we are not in prison anymore. So I am very happy to have independence in my life. Independence means to me that we're free and there's no one to tell us what to do if we have to do something. We're broken free from Britain and 
October the 27th, 1979. And independence means to me that we are free from colonial rule and that our country is beautiful and important. And I think independence is just about showing what our country is about and our culture. Independence to me is freedom of thought and being able to express our democratic heritage. So basically independence to me is freedom and liberation. Knowing that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has gained their independence in, on the October the 27th in 1979, it has made me proud of my country and it shows the appreciation of how St. Vincent gained their independence. It's about having privilege to make decisions or laws on your own without being controlled or governed by any other country. What independence really means to me is freedom from being governed and being held back. And it lets us show our heritage and who we are and how unique we are. Independence means a lot to me because it's the day we said Vincent and the Grenadines got out of slavery. It's when we celebrate the birth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and we celebrate it by going around town and marching, saying the national anthem. And independence means to me that I have freedom to speak and do our work. If independence wasn't a thing now, we would be slaves working like a cotton field or something. We, we would be having to be slaves for the white people. I, that, that, that isn't really very nice. Happy Independence! I'm proud to be a Vincentian. I was born in this country some years ago, I'm still very young. It feels good to live in a country where we have so many freedoms, we have clean air, clean water, we have good, good food here. I've never seen so many breadfruit in my life during any part of my life. If you go down Tong right now, you find some good, good breadfruit. Dong Tong, please get your breadfruit, get your jackfish or get some fish, get something and have your breadfruit. Enjoy this lovely country that we have. Take care of it, keep it clean. Let's be safe people and love one another. Happy Independence. Yes. Independence means to me that you, the country basically gain freedom, pride and dignity and basically know how to control this stuff and stand on their two feet. What independence means to me is a day to showcase your culture, to be proud and to for the older generations to like pass on culture to the younger and showcase it. To me, independence is a day of celebration. You celebrate, you know, what the country has been through in the past and how you freed yourself from it now and the culture you took along with you to this day. And to be proud of getting through all those struggles. Whenever I think about independence, all I could think about is how St. Vincent could stand on their own two feet and manage everything by themselves. And for this reason, I'm quite proud to be a Vincentian. Independence showcases a sense of freedom as to how we were able to obtain our freedom from Britain and we're now able to stand on our own in some way and showcase our many different cultures. I think it is a time of remembering um, remembering the suffering and the struggles St. Vincent went through and seeing how much we have grown as a country. So that is why I am proud to be a citizen of this small little island in the Caribbean known as St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Garafuna Nuguya. I am Garafuna. That's what independence means to me. 
to celebrate the spirit and the resilience of our ancestors. To know that St. Vincent and the Grenadines was once one of the last countries to be colonized because we fought off the British. That was the beginning of our defense, our true independence, and that is what makes me proud to be a true Vincentian. For the API, I am Inga Jackson. Children of the future, help them read, learn, grow. Early reading is the key, so help them read, learn, grow. Let's show them how much fun it is to read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. First and foremost, reading from so young is advantageous. Link with the teachers. Working hand in hand is a must. Just 10 minutes of your child reading to you is a plus. Get fun books, make reading priority. When children read, they are able to learn. And the more they learn, the more they grow. So parents help the kids read, learn, grow. Reading is fun, kids have to know. Read, learn, grow. The children of the future help them read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. This message is brought to you by the OECS USAID Early Learners Program, funded by United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to www.oecs.org slash ELP. St. Vincent and the Grenadines organized a number of roadshows in the UK and Canada during the months of September and October. We bring you highlights from the different events. We're at the end of the 2022 UK Roadshow. I think it has gone very well. It has been amazing to be in front of all the people within the industry. We took it very slow for the first one back since the pandemic started. But I think everybody was pleased with the information that was given. I think they were very happy to have a fairly new destination, so to speak, where they can send their clients something that's new to them, something where they can experience a true Caribbean vacation and we look forward to doing it again next year. London was exceptional, Manchester was exceptional also. A lot of great leads. The team has performed well from everybody, the UK team and the team that came up from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I think as we move forward and as we do more of these road shows, from here we go to Canada and then the US, it will only get better. It's funny how the industry continues to change from year to year, you know, as technology has changed it in terms of online bookings. And now a lot of people are moving back to the travel agents and tour operators for that personalized experience. So we look forward to doing more great things for St. Vincent and the making sure that it's on the map in terms of tourism and that it's a force to reckon with within the tourism industry, not only in the Caribbean, but also in the world. So once again, I want to congratulate my team, my UK team, on a job well done. And my local team in Simmons and the Grenadines and the support of the board of directors of the SVGTA. It has been something that we have looked forward to for the past two and a half years. We did a virtual roadshow last year, but there's nothing like that face-to-face -face experience and being able to speak to people about the great things that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has to offer. My name is Yolanda Costello. I'm the owner of Divine Blissifications, and I came to this excellent event, I have to say, of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I came out more inspired, 
more excited to sell St. Vincent and I got a lovely prize and I'm excited to start planning my vacation to St. Vincent. And the winner is Yolan Castello. We're just so happy to be back here with you and to share information with you about our destination and the things that we are looking forward to as well. Fabulous scuba diving. The scuba diving is second to none and we're known as the critical capital of the world because the visibility is so phenomenal on a black sand reef. Which beach you're gonna go on and experience and you know we have like picnics available too so quite a lot to do on Palm Island. The presenters did a great job of explaining the different islands in the Grenadines and as I mentioned, I came up more educated on the different islands and what they have to offer. Welcome again. We hopefully 2022, we're back in business for good. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's hope so. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is one of the most beautiful destinations in the Caribbean. Thank you to St. Vincent and Tourist Board for coming to Toronto. And I hope to see you guys back here soon. Thank you for coming out. I hope everyone gets home safe and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, an island that ignites your senses with beautiful backdrops perfect for destination weddings. It is ideal for those looking to tie the knot in the Caribbean during the summer. St. Vincent has a number of stunning white sand and black sand beaches, the oldest botanic gardens in the Western Hemisphere, exquisite cuisine from local restaurants. If you are considering tying the knot on this beautiful Caribbean island, the first thing to do is familiarize yourself with the legal requirements. For more information, visit www.discoversvg.com. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. On this week's Community Beat, his dream of becoming an entertainer has taken him to the premier dance company of the Caribbean. Vincentian Keneally Broody shares his journey and vision on this week's Inside Story. A graduate of the Edna Manley College of Visual and Performing Arts, I have with me none other than Vincentian Keneally Broody. He is making ways in Jamaica. Keneally, congratulations to all that you've been doing and the awards and the strides that you've been making there. And welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. What sparked your interest in dancing? Let's let's go back before we get to where we are right now. All right. So for me, dancing started actually because of drama, right? That was where my first passion was. So um, as a child growing up, I, I always had scheduled TV time, right? Where my parents would only allot me one hour on a Saturday to watch TV. Yeah. Um, as I grew older, I was able to look at more shows. And then one day, I, it just sparked my interest to see what's on the TV. So I started changing the channel, and then I went to TNT, so where I saw my first movie, and then I said to myself, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I didn't want anything else. I didn't think about anything else. And from that moment, I think I was about seven, eight, from that moment, I decided that that is what I wanted to do. And I started working assiduously ensure that I attain that. So you started out wanting to be an actor, am I getting this right? Yeah. And then so I started... How, how did it evolve love. into dancing? It, the love for the arts in itself. Like I just wanted to be a part of everything creative, everything cultural, everything in the arts sphere. So I started lo loving movement and I see, I saw uh, the things that persons were doing as actors, dancing, 
and that's when I started to gravitate more to like Disney Channel. So I wanted to be on Broadway, and that's what kind of stirred me into the direction of dance. So after seeing that now, what channel did you take for you to grow in this field? So when I started, when the passion developed, uh, I, I spoke to uh, then director of the company of the Urban Expression, Sean Federicks, and I said to him, let's start a dance company, let's start a drama company. I started pushing it, I started pushing it. I was really passionate about it, really wanted to do it. I said I wanted an avenue so I could uh, express myself, I want to find uh, my niche in, in the industry. And we eventually started the Urban Expression um, for the Urban League. It, 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 it included a dance company, a drama company, a netball uh, group. Yeah. Uh, and, and that kind of pushed me to want to do more. The more I danced, I suppose, the more I wanted to dance. So then you started out with the Urban Expressions and you later moved to another dance company. What dance yeah. company was that? That was the Arabesque Dance Company. So, so it, what, what happened was that I saw the styles of dances that I wanted to get into because I wanted to be more well-rounded. And Urban Expression focused a lot on folk. Uh, and I knew that Arabesque was a bit more well-rounded as a company. And so I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to learn different styles and genres of dance. So uh, I started to focus on contemporary and modern which is where, which is what I love most, uh, which, which is which is what I gravitate to, modern and contemporary. And I started to, to expose the different genres and styles of dances, and that kind of made me want to even know more, you know, to go further. Wow, your passion is so like unwavering throughout the yeah. years. At what point yeah. you decided, okay? I think it's time for me to now spread my wings, leave St. Vincent, and take on much more than what I have right now in the realm of dancing. Truthfully, that was a thought that uh, was in my, when it was in the pipelines from I was a child. I always knew I wanted to go to the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts um, because most of the creatives that I know who were extraordinary performers went to the Edna Manley College of Visual and Performing Arts. And because I was so passionate, I was always researching, right? Which is what I'm getting into a lot now, uh, research. So I researched the, 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 the institution and I realized that the Lion King normally do auditions in Jamaica. So I said, I, I started mapping out my future at that point. I said, I wanted to go and, to the Edna Manley College. how old were you at that point? And how old were you at that point? I was 15 years old. And I was in high school and I said, I, after high school, I wanted to go to the Edna Manley College, audition for Broadway, leave Jamaica, perform in, in America on Broadway, gain some experience, and then come back and use that in St. Vincent as a performer. Wow. And then you began that journey, that Edna Manley journey that, you know, many other Vincentians come back here and they tell us so much about you have Rodney Small and yes. others who really have contributed significantly to our culture. What was that experience like for you and paving the way forward? When I applied for the Edna Manley College, um, I first applied for the School of Math with, uh, I'm hoping to do a minor in drama because I wanted to mostly develop my and techniques before I go to Broadway. And uh, I realized it, it was a bit challenging getting to that, 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 that space where I could leave. And so I realized how hard it was for me to leave St. Vincent to pursue the arts um, for more than one reason. And so I, I decided to switch my major. I had some conversations with Rodney Small um, and Juanita Phillips and Sean Federicks. And I sat with them and, you know, we, we spoke about what, what were the possibilities. Um, Rodney educated me a lot about the institution, being a graduate from the institution, one of the top graduates, I should say, because um, he's a renowned name in Jamaica here at Edmund College. Uh, and he actually 
told me about the School of Arts Management and Humanities because I realized, because it was so difficult for me to leave, I didn't want it to be so hard for everybody else. You know, I wanted to be able to create opportunities for creatives in St. Vincent. So I decided that I would kind of divulge a bit or travel through a different route to get to where I want to go. So I decided to major in arts management. Uh, Rod Rodney sat me down and told me about the program and I applied for arts management with a minor in dance performance and choreography. When I got here, I started doing a little bit of electives in the School of Drama. Awesome. At the end of it all, you graduated, you excelled, and you received a number of awards. What were these awards? All right. So, so on my on, on completion of the college, I have received uh, the Spirits Award, the Dean's Award, uh, Leadership Award, Most Well-Rounded Student, um, the highest GPA in my faculty, you know, um, these are some of the awards that I, I would have received because being at the college, I was I was very active. I was all over the place. I was always in a play at the School of Drama, dancing at School of Dance, um, in Dance Works, which is their dance season, being president of the arts management company called One Creative Yard. Um, I was always involved doing things, you know, um, coming into the, the first year, Going into second year of my college um, experience, I was the international representative for two years. And then going into my final year, I became the president of the college. What was your vision for yourself at that point? knowing that you received so many accolades and the recognition you received? Well, starting with, the, starting with where I wanted to go, I just knew that I wanted change or something. I just knew that what I was seeing was not what I wanted. It's really where it started. I didn't have any major plans of, of saying that I wanted to do these grand things. I wanted to you know, be this or I wanted to be that. It was just a part of my journey to where I wanted to go. And I knew that I wanted to change what I was seeing, you know, being the change that I want to see in the world. And so that kind of motivated me to be uh, international representative, uh, student council president, um, and then pushed me into being now the vice president of the Optimist Club of Trenchtown. So currently I'm, I'm also teaching in Jamaica. I teach drama, I teach dance, I teach um, kids from age three, I teach at the CSEC level, I teach at the CAPE level, um, drama and band. I have a company now that I started in my final year at college called Star Agency. It's a talent management and booking agency. It helps young creatives to understand the industry and to kind of position themselves in the market, uh, connect with a network with uh, persons that could get them to, to get to where they need to go. Um, so I made those types of connections for young creatives. I'm a member of the um, National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica. So you have brought us to a very important juncture, which is the National Dance Company of Jamaica and you're the only Vincentian and non-Jamaican yes. for that matter to yes. be a part of that extraordinary company. What has the journey been like for you? It was an experience, you know, it, it, I think it was an extraordinary experience. I would have gained a lot of knowledge and insight in terms of culture, culture not just about Jamaica, but about the Caribbean, culture about who I am as a person, as, as an identity. It forced me to compare in a good way um, and contrast similarities and differences between Jamaica and St. Vincent. It opened my eyes to possibilities of where we can go as a people, understanding our culture and the importance of understanding who we are as a people, as a nation. Yeah, to grasp more of ourselves as a, as a, as a people for our, for our identity. 
for us to go forward and propel. You recently concluded a seasonal dance performance in Jamaica with the company. Tell us about that. All right, so the season of dance in Jamaica at the NDTC lasts for four weeks. No, four is a, is a lot longer, with a lot more pieces. Each of the works is about between 12 to 45 minutes long. Yeah, so normally if we're doing presentations outside of the season, it will be an excerpt. Yes, um, it would be like five to 10 minutes of the work. Yeah, so we have each piece last, lasting 12 to 45 minutes on the stage um, for one piece. We would run through about five to six pieces in a season and the season for the meals. Each of us as males were performing in five out of the six pieces. Uh, what were the reviews had, like? I think, I think we had some extraordinary reviews uh, from uh, news stations here, the Observer, the Star. Um, everyone was, was, was talking about, gossiping about the NDTC and the work that uh, they would have done. Because I think the NDTC and I think the NDTC is actually uh, the a premier dance company in the Caribbean where uh, they're actually the first dance company or the first renowned internationally named dance company in Jamaica that talks about Caribbean style dances, dances for the black body. It's what gravitated me to them in the first place. And the company itself started uh, the independence of Jamaica in 1962 so their celebration, they, they, we are now celebrating 60 years as Jamaica celebrates 60 years of independence. That's really, really awesome. And moving mm -hmm. from that experience, you journeyed and you toured um, with the company in Miami recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would have been yeah. the first for you? Yes, Just it was the first touring experience. Experience for, for me. All right, so it was my first touring experience. It was, it was scary, to be honest, because it was the first time I was on an international stage with the National Dance Theatre Company in a solo piece. I had two lead roles uh, in four of the pieces that I was in, and a solo in the other, yeah? One of the lead roles that I was in is a is a staple uh, piece for the National Dance Theatre Company, which is Garabenta, which talks about, about black people and how we 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 reproduce. Force, you know, actually symbolizes the black man. Yeah, um, it was it was it was exciting for me to be a part of that, but it was also scary because uh, being a non-Jamaican doing a Jamaican folk style dance was, was a bit scary, but I, I held my ground. I did it. I, I believe I did exceptionally well, and I am just grateful for the experience. Being the only Vincentian there, you would be bringing something totally unique. What do you think you bring yeah. to the table? Well, I think I brought some Vincentian style. Um, I saw a lot, of, I felt a lot of it coming out in, 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 in the style and technique that I was using. Um, because Kumina is very similar to Punta, which we, which we, which we understand to be our, our folk style for um, the Garifuna people. It's very similar. Um, so it was very, you know, challenging to kind of differentiate between the both of them because it can be seen as somewhat very close. Uh, so, so I kind of brought that Vincentian twist, that Vincentian unique, that, 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 that carnival spirit to the Gary and the rough draft uh, uh, pieces that, that kind of made me hone it as my own, you know. Ever so often within the creative industry and the entertainment sphere in the Caribbean, you hear that, okay, there is only so far you could go and there is only so much you can do. What do you have to say to this? No, I mean, like, I am an example of the fact that you can go far. I mean, sometimes they say to us that we, it's only a small amount of us can make it in the industry. Not true. 
It's just because we are taught about the specific sectors of the industry, right? We're not, we're not educated on the possibilities I personally know creatives from around the Caribbean who have left their day-to-day -day job and is working in the creative industry and making more than they were making as government workers, right? It's just that we have to, it's just like business. We have to think of the creative industry as a business. It's like any other industry, just like any other sector. We have to be professionals. We have to understand time management. It's a business. We have to find a need in the market. That's all we need to do as creatives. As long as we understand that people need this and we give it to them, there's money to get from it, right? Some of us think of the arts as arts for art's sake. And so we just work with it as just that. And so we feel like we have to connect with persons from America or we have to do all of these grand things with all of these persons from all over the world. We really don't have to because we have so much of a rich culture here. Now in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Grenada, St. Vincent, Antigua, we could use and we could promote our culture and our identity and ourselves, right? Because if we can't find a seat at their table, we can create our own table and invite them to our table, right? It's just about marketing. How do we market ourselves as creatives? Especially now with, with us being in the fourth industrial level revolution where we have technology, um, market ourselves we could be in jamaica and have a market in barbados and still make money absolutely and i think you can be a part of that change and that well, I'm, I'm to watch change. hoping that i can be <laughs> i'm getting there i'm getting there so i'm taking up as much as possible now getting all of the opportunities and all of the experiences as well so we can awesome. use models and create and develop awesome yeah. Awesome. Well, all the best and thank you. Thank you very much. And woman, it's really, I will never trust another. Not even me, Jack. I will always be a brother. Then come with me and let the Father's will be done. Beautiful white and black sand beaches, lush mountains and valleys, rivers, hidden waterfalls, and multiple islands and islets, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are a friendly people, welcoming tourists from all over the world with exotic boutique and luxury hotels and a hospitable business environment. Let's make all tourists welcome at our international airport, on cruises, on yachts, on sailboats, on land and sea tours, at beach lines, at our restaurant shops and bars, and at our national festivals. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tourism is everyone's business. Live it, love it, embrace Tourism it. Tourism is everyone's business. Yeah. Live it, love it, embrace it. Did you know that St. Vincent and the Grenadines since its independence in 1979 has only been governed by four men who served as Prime Ministers over four decades? Prior to its independence, St. Vincent and the Grenadines was governed by George Charles, leader of the 8th Army Political Party, from 1951 to 1957. Ebenezer Joshua then served as Chief Minister from 1961 to 1967. The Honorable Robert Milton Cato served as Chief Minister and Premier from 1967 to 1980 and then became the first Prime Minister serving from 1980 to 1984. The Honorable Sir James Mitchell was then elected and served from 1989 to 2000. Prior to this post, he served as Premier from 1972 to 1974. Sir James handed the baton of Prime Minister to the Honorable Arnim Eustace who served from 2000 to 2001. Currently, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is governed by Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzalez, who was elected since 2001.
This is where we end our program. Thank you for joining us. I am Nelly Skipper. See you next time.